All right, man, peace. So, brothers, I used to follow baseball very closely back in the 1990s. And probably my favorite player when I first started watching baseball, because I think the first year that I watched an entire season of Major League Baseball was 1990. And I think that that was also the rookie season of Mr. Ken Griffey Jr., who was probably my favorite player of the 1990s, along with the great Barry Bonds. Well, in Ken Griffey Jr.'s first season, he played alongside of his dad, Ken Griffey Sr. And I remember they made such a huge deal about that because Ken Griffey Jr. played in center field and I believe his father was a left fielder. If I'm wrong about that, one of you brothers can correct me. But that was the main narrative back in 1990 and I also believe 91 because they may have played two years together. Either way, all throughout the Major League Baseball season, Whenever they spoke about Ken Griffey Jr., they would mention Ken Griffey Sr. Because I think that they were the first father-son tandem in the history of Major League Baseball to play on the same team. Well, it's very apparent that LeBron James is trying to replicate that phenomenon. He wants to remain in the NBA long enough to play alongside of his son. Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. LeBron is in his 16th season and will turn 34 next month. His oldest son, Bronny, is 14 years old and is in the 8th grade. So, any way you add up the math, it appears it would be difficult for LeBron to play in the NBA with his son, but that is still a dream for the King. Let's hear it. I would love to see the floor with my son. Uh, my son is in the 8th grade now. It so, guys, you know what that means. If LeBron James is saying that he would love to see the floor with his son, that most likely means that not only is he going to be in the NBA for at least another five seasons, that's going to give him the excuse that he needs to chase after Kareem's record, even if the team that he's on is bad. He can say, I'm staying in the NBA until I can play with my son. So he's planting that seed very early that, no, I'm not going to be in the NBA to chase stats or break records. I'm still here hanging around the NBA because I'm waiting on Bronny Jr. That's going to be the excuse. But you know what? I don't really doubt that LeBron James is still going to be an extremely competitive and very good player even five years from now. Because unless his body goes through some type of drastic breakdown over the next year or so, which I mean could happen, he is turning 34 going into 35 and oftentimes athletes quote unquote fall off the cliff around that time. But because he takes care of his body so well, and he spends well over a million dollars a year in the quote-unquote maintenance of his body, as well as funding the quote-unquote biochemist, I do believe that even five years from now, LeBron is going to be somebody averaging at least 22, 23 points per game. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, if he continues on the path that he's on right now, he could possibly be in the NBA in five, six years. So that would be an unbelievable moment for not only myself, but for my family, for everybody. So we'll see. Taking care of the body is number one. But more importantly, taking care of the mind. If your mind's not fresh, then your body will fall at the waistline. So that I agree with that. And I wonder what LeBron's aspirations are for his younger son. Maybe his younger son is not as enraptured by the game of basketball as Bronny is. Who knows? That would be pretty dang on cool if I'm able to be on the NBA floor with my uh, my oldest son. All right, Chris Broussard back with us for this discussion. But Shannon, I'm going to start with you here. What are the chances of that happening? Slim to none. Slim to none. Because Brown had barely cleaned up his room. How the hell he going to make it to the NBA? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. There's a 100% chance that Brown is going to make it into the league. How could he not? Look at him. He got the DNA of three superior athletes, LeBron, Savannah, and myself. When you mix that DNA, that genetic mixture, that's, that's a powerful cocktail of athletic dominance. How could he not make it? Jenny, stop asking me stupid ass questions. Go ahead, Skip. I'm gonna say a million to one. Huh. Uh, a million to one, wow. because here's the thing now. Now, the only reason why Shannon is saying that is because he's trying to take pressure off of both LeBron James Sr. and LeBron James Jr. Because this brother knows damn well that the chances of Bronny Jr. making it onto an NBA roster are probably no lower than 100 to 1. And that's a conservative estimate. Assuming that he does not suffer any type of calamitous injury between now and when he turns 18 years old or 19 years old, whenever he declares for the NBA draft, he is going to be drafted. You're talking about he's greater than eighth grade. That's eighth grade. So you got four years of high school and you got cop now. There have been a 
lot of guys that were great eighth graders. Some like myself. Skip, I was ready to declare for the NFL and the NBA in eighth grade. But it was illegal. They never seen a physical specimen like myself. Some great ninth graders and tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders that didn't play in the NBA. So everything ha- I mean, everything has to go perfect for him. Now it's I, more I a more likely scenario is LeBron is still playing. Because I can see LeBron playing twenty one seasons in the NBA. Oh, most definitely. I see Braun playing at least till he's 45, 46 years old. The body that he have. He had the physique of a Greek god, Skip. The man built like a statue. He's almost as ripped as me. Probably not going to be the same player that he is now. I'm, Skip, I mean, we look at Father Son, we look at Ken Griffey Sr. and Ken Griffey Jr. Yes, they pretty much are the benchmark for Father Son tandems in professional sports. At least in one of the three major professional sports. Now, we're talking about a prodigy. Ken Griffey Jr. was a prodigy hit. Absolutely. Let me say this. Ken Griffey Jr. is the most talented baseball player to come into the major leagues in, I would say, the last 40 years. Certain people might try to dispute that. Certain brothers may say, well, what about Barry Bonds? Barry Bonds did not have the throwing arm that Ken Griffey Jr. had. That's why they put him in left field. Now, Barry Bonds was a wonderkind as a hitter. As a hitter, he might be the most gifted natural hitter for a hitter that was also a power hitter in Major League Baseball history. Like he's right there with Manny Ramirez and Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and any of the other names that you can cite who could hit for both average and power. But Ken Griffey Jr., man, he was just naturally gifted. He was unbelievable. There was nothing that he could not do well. Nothing. He had a great throwing arm from center field. He was an unbelievable fielder. He ran the base as well. He could have stole 30 to 40 bases a year if he'd wanted to, but he hit cleanup in that Seattle lineup. So it's going to be very difficult for him to steal bases when he has Alex Rodriguez hitting in front of him because that clogs the bases up. His dad was not a prodigy, Skip. So what's the likelihood that the dad is a prodigy and the son is a prodigy? Now, Shannon, did you hear what you just said? You said, what are the chances that the dad is a prodigy and the son is a prodigy? Now, when LeVar Ball made that same statement last year, all you guys jumped on him. But now you're saying the same thing. Ain't that a bitch? And even, now LeBron said, not, not, it, I said a million to one, LeBron said just taking the court. When King Griffey Sr., Jr. made it to the majors, you know, the son was on, the dad was on the Reds. He was about to get released and he said, well, that's a great opportunity for me. I can get an opportunity to play with my son. So he ended up going to the Mariners. They played, not only did they play, they batted behind each other. Yeah. Man, that's a once in a lifetime. I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again. Mm. No, I think that we will, Shannon. I believe that LeBron James Sr. is going to play with LeBron James Jr. Mm. I think if it was baseball... At the very least, they'll play against one another. Baseball, it would be more likely you could play longer. You could play longer and there's a quicker ascension ride. But I just, I, I think I'm going to say a million to one. Mm-hmm. But if anybody... No way is that in a million to one chance, Shannon Sharp. And you know that. But I understand what you're doing, brother. You're trying to take pressure off of Bronny Jr. I get it. But Bronny Jr. will make it to the NBA, barring catastrophic injury. Hopefully that does not happen to the young brother. But I do believe that he's going to make it to the NBA. If for no other reason, the exploits of his father is going to make scouts and NBA general managers give him the benefit of the doubt. Even if he seems to be someone in college or in high school who's not particularly a great standout. But based off of the highlights that I've seen of him, he's going to be an explosive athlete. Somebody that's going to stick around long enough, mm-hmm. it would be LeBron to be able to see the court with his son. I definitely don't think it's a million to one. I think it's... Absolutely not. I think it's a lot less... I, I'm going to say there's maybe a 20% chance of it happening. Now, I wouldn't go that high, uh, Chris Broussard. That's a bit high. That's five to one. I would give it anywhere from... 50 to 1 to 100 to 1. Five to, 5 to 1 is a bit high. I really believe that. If First of all, one of the things that makes me go so high is LeBron clearly is motivated to do it. I agree with that. Because he's not going to be a superstar. We're not talking about LeBron. You're talking about well, the well, that's, that, I, I'm going to I'm gonna get to him. I'm going to get to him. But LeBron, number one, only four players. It will be LeBron's 21st year. Yes. If Bronny was a prep to pro. And I think the one and done will be done by then. Right. But 
I agree. They're going to find a way around that one and done rule by the time it is time for Bronny Jr. to declare. But I will say this. LeBron James Sr. is also on record stating that he hopes that Mike Krzyzewski is still the coach of Duke by the time LeBron James Jr. wants to decide what college he wants to go to. So there is the chance that Bronny Jr. may may spend one year at Duke University or Kentucky because we know that LeBron James likes to flirt with coach John Calipari of the Kentucky Wildcats and Coach K of the Duke Blue Devils. We know that LeBron likes to go back and forth with the two of those guys. Right. But is he going to be that good? So I'm, I'm with you. I'm not right. saying it's guaranteed. But will LeBron, if he averages 24 points a game, say for the rest of his career, he will pass Kareem. Ding. There you go, Chris Broussard. That's what this is really a smokescreen for. <laughs> okay? LeBron is trying to justify. He's trying to put certain sentiments out there just in case the Lakers or whatever team he's playing for five years from now is not that good. And people tried to say, LeBron, why are you still hanging on? Is it to chase Kareem? And he'll have the excuse, no, I'm waiting for my son. In his 19th year. Yep. So what he would want to, would he have want to play two more years as probably, let's just be honest, a pretty good player, but not a superstar anymore. Right. Well, we know a couple of things about LeBron James. We know that he does love the game of basketball. But the only thing that he loves more than basketball is attention. And as I've stated for a while now, LeBron will try to utilize his son to garner what little attention he'll have left at the end of his career. When I first put that statement out, when he got into his son's basketball team's layup line and was throwing down dunks and all this other nonsense, a lot of the brothers got upset with me who happened to idolize LeBron. And I told them, look, I'm only calling it how I see it. Now, suddenly we're hearing LeBron talk about how he wants to play in the league at the same time as his son. That's already him saying in a roundabout way, not in a malicious way, but in a roundabout way, I'm going to utilize the energy around my son to galvanize myself. And hopefully some of that energy will reflect upon me. And you'll pay attention to me a little bit more in my last year or last couple of years in the NBA. It just is what it is. Would LeBron be motivated to do that? So I think that's a big issue. As far as little LeBron, He's ranked by Coast to Coast Prep website, which LeBron has referenced before, I believe. He's ranked 24th in the 8th grade. I actually like that. I can't that. believe they're ranking eighth. I know. <laughs> well, I like that also, Chris Broussard. You don't want to be ranked number one. I mean, especially if you're LeBron James' son. That's too much pressure, too much expectations. Just go out there and play. Well, I, But I like that he's only 24th because a lot of the guys that young – that are ranked number one don't pan out. When, Absolutely. When LeBron was in eighth grade, the number one player in the country was Major Wingate. Hmm. I remember him. You remember him? I he remember played in Tennessee now. like yeah. three years. Yeah. Never got to the NBA. Right. But OJ Victor Mayo. Was. Now he made it, but you know, yeah. fell off their character. A lot of guys, because right. they're men by the time they're eighth right. graders. Michael Jordan is on record as stating that all the way through his junior year in high school, nobody knew who the hell he was. And then I think that he went to the ABC camp, one of those camps that he went to. He went to a camp up there in Pittsburgh also and showed out. And all of a sudden he got the notice of Roy Williams, who I believe was sent as a scout by Dean Smith. And then the rest was history. I think that he committed to North Carolina somewhere in the middle of his senior year at Laney High School. Either way, the point is that Michael Jordan has always stated that he was not a highly recruited high school basketball player. There were not too many colleges knocking down his door. So that just goes along with what Chris Broussard is saying, that it's probably a good thing that LeBron James' son is not considered to be the number one player in the nation. It is always a little bit better to sneak up on the competition, even though we know LeBron James Jr. is going to have that red dot on his forehead. Everybody's going to be wanting to make a name off of trying to make him look bad on the basketball court. So it is what it is. So Kobe... I'm not saying they weren't really good in eighth grade, but Kobe, Dwayne Wade, LeBron was not ranked nationally when he was in eighth grade. He really blew up on the national scene as a freshman mm -hmm. in high school. So I like the fact that little LeBron is not, you know, the number one player in the country yet at his age. That shows he's got room for growth. I've talked to people that watch LeBron at this age and little LeBron at this age. Most of them tell me as good as little LeBron is, He's not as good as LeBron was. Right. Well, I mean, that's kind of difficult. 
Uh, Chris Broussard, LeBron James is probably the most prominent high school basketball prospect since Lou Alcindor came out of Paul Memorial. Right, which is uh, nothing wrong with that. Right. <laughs> However, one, I talked to somebody today who watched them both and c was close to LeBron. He said they're very comparable. Huh. He said the, the feel for the game, and you've watched videos of little LeBron, yep. feel for the game, the passing ability, the willingness to pass. And LeBron has said he's a better shooter and better ball handler at this stage, which... Well, you'd expect that. He's getting top-notch coaching. Ball handling, period, tends to be better all around in today's game because so many of these young players, they want to be able to dominate in the face-up game on offense. They don't really get down into the low post. Back when I first started watching basketball, late, late, late 80s, throughout the 90s, just about every great offensive player could post up. Even point guards would post up. Rod Strickland, Tim Hardaway, they would try to post you up. That's just how the game was back then. So the post-up skills were more dominant back then. Today it's the face-up game. Especially since guys really can't hand-check you. So it's easier to go in between the legs 5,000 times than it was back then. Which makes sense because these kids are better at that. They handle it. Now they right, got all the right. teachers. Nowadays. But look, you're right that it's a long shot for a guy to in eighth grade right. to make it to the NBA. But look, he's got some advantages. If he still has... He has all the advantages. The only thing that he has to do is not get hurt. And hopefully he doesn't. That's the drive. And that's the question too. Is he going to be motivated? Will he not want to walk into his dad's shadow and all that stuff? But if he has the drive, you got a great teacher, obviously, in LeBron. He's playing... Is LeBron really a great teacher? I mean, <laughs> do you really want to learn basketball from LeBron? Of course, that's your father. He's going to give you certain tips and recommendations and things of that nature. But there's only one LeBron James. Like, he's really the only player of his type that we've seen in the history of basketball. So unless his son has the exact same gifts as his father, it's going to be very difficult for him to learn to play basketball from him. I think that Bronny Jr. will be better off seeking out his own path, playing high school basketball. And I hope that he does go to college for at least one year to really learn how to play in a system unlike his dad playing against the best kids in the world i i really think it's a it's a good chance that he makes the nba I, i'm gonna say i'm interested to hear what you say what you what do i ronnie is already a better shooter than his father oh and that's <laughs> not being sarcastic and i'm not being sarcastic i'm rooting for Bronny jr because i need somebody to hate on for the next 20 years i mean this is a family thing this is a generational thing for me I hate on everyone out of that family. I've been hating on LeBron since 2002. I want to hate on Bronny when he comes in in 2022. I mean, shit, I hated on Nate Thurman back in the 60s and 70s. That's LeBron's dad, isn't it? I mean, th this this has to keep going. I mean, I've made my whole career off hating. Especially hating on Bron. Hey, but you know, no, just, just right now, no, he's no, a no. better shooter. He is. Just no, off the video, no. I like his stroke better. I like his range better. I do. You I'm see, serious. You see LeBron pull up well, Bronny Jr. does have a naturally better shooting form than his father. LeBron James Sr. had a very ugly shooting form when he came into the NBA. But shout out to him for willing himself into becoming not even just a competent jump shooter, but to be quite frank with you, a proficient three-point jump shooter. I mean, he's, he's dangerous from outside now, LeBron James is. I always say this, my litmus test for how good I consider a jump shooter to be is when they pull up, do you expect it to go in or do you expect it to miss? And LeBron James is at the point, especially on that left side, and if he's not contested, I expect the basketball to go through the net when he shoots it now. So that's a testament to how, to how hard he's worked. Enough of where he's pulling up from. This kid has a chance to be really good. Seriously, really good. Well, yeah, to the naked eye, it looks like he's going to be a very dynamic player. Will he stay on path? There's no better teacher than his father. There's no. I'm not quite sure about that, Skip. I think that LeBron James Sr. can give his son a lot of tips, of course, a lot of advice, but to train him up, coach him, and teach him, I think that he'd be better off allowing the coaches of the basketball teams that LeBron James Jr. plays for to instruct him on these things because LeBron James Sr. has already shown that he does not care about what other people think about basketball, even his coaches. And you don't want that, that type of mentality to rub off on your son, especially if he might not have the overall physical gift that you have. But once again, based off of what I've seen, little man's like 5'11". He already got crazy hops. So he's going to be somewhere in the realm of what his father is.
you know, higher basketball IQ than his father, and it looks like the kid got some of it. I don't know if you can inherit it or not. It looks like it. It looks right. like he did. So I'm, I'm with Chris. I might be a little higher. Given LeBron, here, here's the key X factor of this, is LeBron James, I hate to even bring this up because I'm going to knock on wood for him. He is the most durable superstar in sports history. I agree with that. And there's nobody even close. He's had no, I'm knocking on wood because I don't even like to bring it up, but he's had no serious injury, no knee. I agree because when we think about the most durable superstars in the history of sports, of course we have to look at guys like Brett Favre, um, Peyton Manning, players who were able to play 98, 99% of their team's games. But we always heard about their injuries. With LeBron, we don't even hear about him being hurt, much less having injuries that may leave him out or may cause him to, to miss certain games or playoff series and things of that nature. Like, this dude's been unbelievably gifted in, regard, in regards to his physical makeup. Now, was there any form of genetic manipulation, <laughs> manipulation with LeBron James? With him being a potential monarch athlete, who the hell knows? Knees, no shoulders, no back. Right. Bit little back things, but not big back. Right. Things, right. Right. So because. Well, if you let Stephon Marbury tell it, the reason why LeBron James has issues with his back is because of how his feet point outward, due to the fact that LeBron James is slew-footed. That's what has led to some of his back injuries, or his back ailments, I should say. Because of that, it gives you a chance, given his knowledge for how to keep, he they talked about yeah, you know, yeah. just take care of himself, yep. given the money he puts into it, given the time he puts into it, he's got a chance to play 21 or 22 years. Yes. If he could get to 22 and still be a credible NBA player, then you would have a chance. So what would be the hypothetical here? LeBron, at some point at age 19, I mean, uh, year 19, 21, 22, would have to concede to be a second or even a third banana. Can he? And that would be my dream. If I could have LeBron James Sr. and Jr. in the NBA at the same time, that's like a hating smorgasbord for me. I wouldn't even be able to sleep at night. This could carry me well into my 80s. I could hate on Bronny Jr. until I was 85 years old. Can he take that pride-wise? Right. Could he accept that? If he were even a third banana right. in his 21st or 22nd year, that's pretty good. Okay. Like, right. If he was still part that, of a big... Is that okay with him? Can he live with that? that well, that's going to be... But here's the thing. The reason why I went so high... But think about it. Think about the chances of a player going to the NBA. Okay, okay. now... I got it. I, I got you. But think about this. Okay, let's do... There are two cases here. Let's say Bronny maxes out and he's a mid-first-round draft choice. Well, that would mean some team is thinking, if I take LeBron Jr., at 15, 17, 19, wherever in there, I, it's a package deal because I could get the last hurrah from his dad and, and it would be a drawing card, yeah. right? Yeah. So maybe he would go a little higher right. just for that. Right. Because then LeBron, this, it, it couldn't finish in LA. He would have to go w with right. wherever the kid got drafted. Atlanta or Toronto, I don't know where it'd be, but he, LeBron would have to go finish his career with his kid there just the way. Well, not necessarily. You never know what might happen. LeBron might pull some strings with Adam Silver and whatever team he's on to make sure that the team that he's currently on will draft him. And I don't think that we're going too far out on a limb to state that LeBron James is probably going to end his career either with the Lakers or maybe even back in Cleveland. Griffey Sr. went to Seattle, right? Right, right? right. Okay. The opposite of this would be, let's say Bronny is just pretty good, like Leangelo or whatever, you know, like the middle side. Right. So... Then, then. Right, but Leandro Ball is not even pretty good. He's not good enough to even compete for one of the major college programs anywhere in the country, at least not in the aftermath of that situation over there in China. So I would not compare him to Bronny Jr. Plus, Bronny Jr. is a ball handler and a distributor. I have, I have no doubt that he's not going to have any problems getting recruited by just about every college slash university in the country. Then, what if he didn't get drafted, but, but again, LeBron is still a Laker, and they say, well, we'll just bring in Bronny right. as, as our 12th man yeah, or whatever. Right. right. Okay. That's possible. Okay. That's actually, yeah, because you could just sign him you even though he might not play. just put him at the That's end of the true. bench, and then you could say that they got some minutes. Right, but if you're LeBron James Sr., do you really want that? You want your son being a bum-ass player and sitting on the very end of the bench and you sitting down next to him? That's kind of pathetic. I think that what LeBron James Sr., is planning on is his son becoming a great player. 
I think that he sees the signs of it already. And he's just going to sit back and watch that flower bloom. And he expects to still be in the NBA by 2022 or 2024, whenever it is that his son finally gets drafted by an NBA team, whether he goes to college for a year or two years or whether he comes into the league. I think that LeBron James Sr. will, will wait in the NBA as long as it takes to meet up with his son. See, you know what? We, we just outlined every possible perfect scenario. That's true. Everything we you know, ask. I don't think so, Shannon. I really don't. I think that Shannon Sharp believes that there's going to have to be all of these conditions that are met before LeBron James Jr. makes to the NBA. And we cannot evaluate him like he's a regular kid. We have to evaluate him like he's a young man who's the recipient of the dominant genetic structure that's necessary to be considered a world-class athlete. We know that he has that already, at least to a certain degree. He might not have it to the degree of his father, but he has it enough that he can be considered an NBA prospect even at 13, 14 years old. So we can't look at him like a regular kid from the hood who we're not quite sure has what it takes. We know that Brian is going to have what it takes because at the very least, he's going to be a great athlete, a great natural athlete, and he's going to get the coaching. That's the exactly. right. There's a lot to ask, but I don't think that's, it's... But that's what you just said. Now, that's not 20%. No, but... Okay, but, so but what, what you just said, you said it's a million to, a million one, to one that Bronny will be an NBA player. No, no, player. no, no. I'm saying there's a million to one that they will play on the court at the same time. I, I'm going to say this too, though, about kids, and, and I guess this will have to play out. But I do think with the scouting being better, with the train, I mean, all the best kids now, they're not playing on the playground. They're having personal trainers. Oh, yeah, yeah, They're yeah, playing yeah. AAU. We know the NBA is about to start, yeah. you know, getting involved with scouting these kids yeah. at a young yeah. age, identifying them. I think from this point forward, the best young players, like, they're going to be, probably have a better chance to go to the NBA than years past because scouting wasn't as good. And if a kid right. was bigger and dominating, okay. I wish I knew. Time. Well, I'm not quite sure about that, Chris Boussard, because you're going to have more great young players, but the amount of teams is going to stay the same. The real issue with the NBA right now is that it seems as if there's about 10% of the players who can remain in the league past the age of 30, and they have to be all-star level players or all-star quality players. And if you don't have that, everybody else is like 25 years old or younger. And that's an issue that the NBA is going to have to resolve because you still need those grizzled veterans you know, to add a little bit of, of understanding and wisdom to an NBA locker room. How tall is Bronny going to end up being? That has a lot to do with okay. it. Okay, he's about six feet, five ten. Okay, how tall is Savannah? Maybe. Oh no, Savannah's five foot four and a quarter, definitely. Five foot four and a quarter. Me and LeBron measured it yesterday. Five, oh, no. five, 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 six. Four, five, yeah, five, 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 Five six in heel, five four and a quarter barefoot skip. LeBron, I'm giving him six nine. So what's Wait, what are the genetics gonna say? Six. He'll probably be at least six four. I would think maybe six four. Could he be a six point. four, six five point guard? I think so. I think that he could be a six foot four inch point guard in the NBA. Main thing for Bronny is he's gonna have to perfect his vision, understanding how to get his teammates the ball in the right position. And he's certainly going to have to make sure that he's proficient with his long-range three ball. It's the main thing that you need to be an NBA point guard right now. And like you said, if he's shooting it, keeps working on his jump shot, his now, handle. Yeah, my thing is not that he make it to the NBA. Make it to the NBA while his dad is still playing. Right. Don't, don't. Yeah. Yes, cause that's the main thing. We have to make sure that Bronny Jr. can get there while Bronny Sr. is still there. Then I could sign a 10-day. And we could be the first family in the NBA. Bron James Sr. playing point forward. Bron James Jr. playing point guard. And I'm going to be the point center. My name is Shannon Sharp James. We're going to be the first James family in the NBA all play on the same team at the same time. It's going to be it's gonna be wonderful, Skip. Don't hate. We're going to give your old wrinkled up ass a front row seat. And you better be quiet and enjoy the game. Oh, that's high school. And LeBron, and LeBron has basically said, I don't necessarily have to be on the same team. Mm -hmm. I just want to be able to say I'm on the same court. Only give time. Right, but Shannon, we all know that LeBron James Sr. is going to want his son on the same team as him. And if he can't control it, he's going to try to manipulate that to happen. I mean, it just so happened that Griffey Sr. Jr. Okay. were on the exact so you same keep team. keep making the point. He's listening to Luke and maybe Magic. His minutes are way down. Yes. He ranks 19th in the NBA in minutes played after he led the league the last two years Correct. in minutes played. Okay, that'll work. Yes. Right? It's hard to see LeBron 
Right, but I don't think that that's going to have much of an impact on whether or not LeBron James is still in the league five or six years from now, Skip. Either his body is going to break down drastically overnight, which oftentimes happens to all-time great athletes who push their body to the limit, whether in their training or on the court or on the field, or he's going to be able to last. I mean, who knows? Brian look like a Vince Carter now. Yeah. I don't know that he would do that. Kareem, Kareem stayed well after his prime, but, but he was competing for championships. But, but remember, so, you know, Kareem had was different. Kareem would get the rebound, throw that thing down, Magic you push it, walk. Come on up here, Cal. <laughs> we got nothing going on. Hey. Absolutely. Let me say this. Having Magic Johnson on that team probably added five or six years onto Kareem's career. Where you wanted that? They throw it down the cap, cap throw the stop. And they still winning championships. Right. Like right. I don't know where LeBron will be then, but probably not. He won't be a key factor on the championship no. team. I would. And think. that's a little hard when you're that high. Yeah. And you used to be skip. That's what ran Michael. Michael, like man, I can't compete. I'm not the same guy. I've been this guy for so long. Well, no, not quite, Shannon Sharp. What really drove Michael Jordan out of professional basketball, at least from the Bulls, was that they were not willing to keep the team together. What drove him away from the Washington Wizards is that the NBA was finally ready to move on to that next generation. And they needed Michael Jordan to bridge the gap between the Bulls dynasty and the Lakers dynasty. They needed that. The players in the NBA who were very young and precocious, they were not ready to take over the league when Michael retired. And that caused a disjointing in the NBA, which led to a really staggering drop off in ratings. When you look at the, the ratings of the New York Knicks San Antonio Spurs finals, it's like the worst ever. And this is in the aftermath of the Jordan finals that were getting the highest ratings in the history of the NBA. When you look at the ratings for Bulls Lakers, Bulls Blazers, Bulls Suns, Bulls Jazz, all the highest ever. And then after that, you have those Lakers Celtics series and the Lakers Pistons series of the 80s. But when Jordan retired in 98, the next year the Knicks played the Spurs in the finals, that was like the lowest rated finals ever. That's why they needed the Lakers to be built up with Shaq and Kobe. So it was very good in the eyes of the NBA when Phil Jackson became the coach of the Lakers. But the league was still struggling a little bit. So Jordan had to come back and, you know, pretty much kind of try to put his fingers in those holes in the dam until a lot of the young players could mature and he was promised that he would be able to take over ownership of the Washington Wizards franchise but that never came to fruition and we expect LeBron to be that in year 19, 20, 21 and hopefully and from the outside looking in Bronny is handling the attention well oh, and yeah. the height but that's he's still in 8th yeah, grade a lot this is emotion. a lot yeah, emotionally I nice. mentally I mean your dad's LeBron so let's yeah. just Pump the brakes. I'm going to win the lottery. I'm going to win the lottery. We'll see. Absolutely. We're going to win the lottery, Skip. We're going to be the richest family in the world. The Kardashians, the Oppenheimers, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, they ain't going to have shit on us. We're the richest family in the world. The Sharp James family. And we want you to write a story about that, Skip. It's your old wrinkled up scrotum face ass. Shannon. We got a few years to figure that out. Uh, you got no few years. I'm playing the night and tomorrow. <laughs> Good to have you. Always, Chris. All right, we'll skip. Hell yeah. As soon as Brian and Jr. get drafted, I'm retiring, Skip. I'm leaving the show. So start looking for my replacement right now. You got four years with your old ass. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see what happens with Brian and Jr. Hopefully the young man does not suffer any type of injuries and he can see his dreams come to fruition. So peace.